I spent every single penny in my bank account to see if 8K gaming is possible. I bought a 65 inch 8K TV and the brand new 3090 Ti, a $3,000 GPU that currently is the most powerful in the world. This could be my most expensive mistake yet and I could be left bankrupt all for a YouTube video. So like, subscribe and share if you enjoy this video. The question you may be asking is why would you want to game in 8K? And the answer is simple, to win the console wars. 4K 120 gaming is now possible from an Xbox and PlayStation and it's up to us people PC guys to step things up, so I'm making this video for the PC Master Race. For the PC, we have a Ryzen 9 3900X, 12 core CPU, and 32 gigabytes of RAM. But before we get started, we need to switch out my 3080 Ti for the 3090 Ti. With the new upgrades, this PC costs over $6,000, and I'm gonna play Minecraft on it. We've now got all of the graphics drivers installed on our 3090 Ti, so it is displaying correctly. Now, I wanna show you something that's pretty hilarious. So if we go into our display settings, you can see right now that we have our 8k resolution currently selected now if we go to our image scaling right now this is set to 350 it's recommended to be at around 500 which is pretty significant but if we set it to the native scaling resolution which is what it should be at 8k you can see how tiny the text is on the display, which I think is just pretty funny. Although this telly is capable of 4K 120 hertz, currently at this time, the maximum you can do for 8K is 60 hertz, which I think is probably going to be pretty demanding anyways, so we don't really need to stress about high refresh rate gaming. So the first game that I want to take a look at is Forza Horizon 5. If we jump into our settings, we'll go over to video. You can see right now we have got this set at 8K resolution and the maximum frame rate is 60 FPS. Now in regards to the graphic settings, I'm just using the extreme preset. So basically everything is set to maximum settings other than you know, there's a few things that we could increase such as the MSA and those types of things. But we'll keep it on the extreme one because I think that will be uh, pretty intense. Now on the home page, you can see the pre-rendered cutscene. I don't even think this is in 4K. It looks more like 1080p. I could be wrong. It could be 4K and it just doesn't look like that on this display. But let's head in to the game. So we're now inside of the Forza Horizon world and I've got all of the GPU information in the top left corner, including the FPS, GPU temperatures, clock information for anyone who is interested in all of that. So this is actually 8K right now in Forza Horizon 5 and it looks absolutely breathtaking. I'm, I'm shocked that it actually looks this good. I thought it wouldn't be like very noticeable, the difference. So I'm in my Aston Martin and this is my house here, which definitely, you know, if you're driving Aston Martin, you would probably hope you'd have a better house, but that's the realism of Forza Horizon 5. So here we are just off-roading in an Aston Martin, another realistic element of Forza Horizon 5. So currently the FPS is around sort of 30, 30 FPS, which if you think about if you're a console gamer, you would think this is pretty much perfection, because if you've had a PS4, you've played at like 900p 30 FPS for literally ever. So it's actually playing pretty well, like, a, like an incredibly futuristic gaming console that we might see in like 10 years time. Now, if we go into maybe a less uh, populated area, right now we're sort of in quite busy area. I say that while I head into the Forza Horizon hub, which is the busiest area on the map uh, in regards to sort of players and that. So we've got 33 FPS, still 36 FPS, it's still doing okay. But if we maybe go out to the beach area on this game, out by the coast, this is where I hope we would see slightly higher FPS because we don't have as much stuff going on. Now, if I change views, something that's quite interesting, if I change views, the FPS actually increases. So if we're inside of this cockpit view, which is more appropriate if you're using a steering wheel, uh, you can see we're getting 45 FPS now because obviously it's not rendering as much in terms of the field of view. So if you do actually game with a steering wheel, which I traditionally do, you could actually play this game at 8K and be pretty happy with it. Now, before we actually arrive at the coast and the beach to check out the FPS difference, let's take a look at the cactus over here. Now, when you actually look at it in detail, you can see each individual prong, like each thorn, on the cactus, which is pretty insane. And also the rocks as well have got individual textures that you can see. Now, I know it's not like Call of Duty Ghosts when that had 3D rocks, all of the hype there, but it actually looks very detailed. And these are things I've never noticed before when I've played this game quite a lot as well in 4K. So we now arrive at the coastline, which is the more simple area of the map. And you can see we're getting around 42, 43 FPS in this exterior view. If we switch to the cockpit view, it's going up to almost 50 FPS. So this is absolute perfection at this point. You know, you're getting 8K, 60 FPS almost. I've got not much to complain about. This is a completely gameable experience. Let's see how it does when we transition from the coastline here. So 43 FPS, we're going into a village now. Not too complex of a village, but a bit more stuff it's got to animate. 40 FPS. Yeah, we're dropping into the 30s now very quickly. And you can really feel the difference when you do drop from that silky 40 to 50 FPS, even down to 35 here. 
cruising around this corner. Now this is more the type of place you'd expect my character to live, considering I've got the uh, Aston Martin here. This is more like the sport, nice beach house on the coast. I need to really get some cash to get this house here. Now with Halo Infinite having quite small maps and low player counts within the games, and often it's like 4v4, 8v8, whatever the game mode you choose, we should really expect this to obliterate 8K gaming. Other than the fancy sort of shadows and lighting that this game has, I don't think there's too much craziness that will destroy our GPU performance. In a game of Halo Infinite, you can see we're getting pretty much a solid 60 FPS. It's dropping down to maybe the high 50s now and again, but there's not too much to complain about. We've got this game cranked up to maximum graphics, basically and it's basically like a really high-end console gaming experience. It runs smooth and there's no crazy FPS drops. Definitely by far out of all of the games we've tested so far, this is definitely my favorite one. Yeah, so we're getting about 50 to, 50 to 57 FPS at the moment. So we're now playing 8K solid 60 FPS basically on Halo and we're getting absolutely wrecked by a guy and a ghost, oh my word. Uh, so yeah, Halo Infinite, I give this solid 9 out of 10. Next, we're going to take a look at one of my favorite games, which is Red Dead Redemption 2. First, let's take a look inside of the graphic settings. Now, we've got this set at 8K, and we have everything currently set to Ultra. We've got Ultra, High, uh, and a lot of things are turned on. I'm expecting this game to struggle quite a bit as it's a huge detailed open world with quite a lot of like um, AI going on processing different elements but there is Nvidia DLSS that we can try to try and boost it in a moment. Right now we're in a village and we're running at 20 FPS which, which is a bit of a slog to play to be honest. 20, 24 FPS. I am playing with a controller but it still feels pretty shoddy and you know, 30 FPS is the bare minimum we should be going for. Now, to give credit to Rockstar, this is quite a, an intensive area. We're in a village, we've got a lot of graphics particles going on with obviously the, the sand that's in the air, but you can also see the render latency is obscenely high, uh, which is making the, the input latency feel really sluggish. Next, let's try it with NVIDIA DLSS turned on, and I'm going to go for performance, so ultra performance to ensure that we get the best FPS out of this experience. So now with DLSS turned on, we're getting over 45 FPS. You can see right now, we're in the exact same area as we just were, and now we're getting 45 FPS. So that NVIDIA DLSS has boosted our frame rate to play this game in 8K. And to be honest, the graphics still look perfectly fine from an average viewing distance. And so if you were pixel, pixel peeping, you would see maybe a softness around the hair a little bit if you're really looking at it. But now we're getting a solid 40 FPS where we were previously getting around 20, which was virtually unplayable. Next up, we have Minecraft. Now, I've never actually played this on the PC. I've only played the Xbox and iPad version. And there doesn't seem to be too many graphic settings other than fancy bubbles, fancy leaves, fancy lighting or whatever. So we're going to crank all them up. We're going to increase the render distance to the maximum that we can. And we'll increase the anti-aliasing, just basically crank up all the graphic settings. And I've also increased the FOV. So I've joined this server that's got about 6,000 people in. So we've got a bit of, you know, intensity going on here in terms of the GPU and also the sort of the, the world that we've loaded in. We're not just in an empty world. Now, as you saw, we set the chunks to the maximum render distance that it let us do in that menu. And we're running a solid 60 FPS. This is running perfectly fine. And also out of all of the games we've tested so far, this has had the, the lowest render latency. So the input lag on this thing is incredibly responsive. I've got no complaints whatsoever in that department. It, it feels incredibly smooth for your input device. Now jumping into my own private server when we are in creative mode, which lets you fly around and explore the map significantly faster, you can see the FPS is actually struggling a little bit more. We're getting around like 20 FPS when flying around the map, which to be fair is expected as it's rendering a lot more chunks this way. You've got all the islands miles away and also the island that we are here. So it is struggling a little bit more. So I guess if you made this world a little bit more complex, it might be a bit of a nightmare. But overall, Minecraft isn't a terrible experience. I would give it a solid maybe seven out of 10 because it's not really my type of game. In conclusion, you definitely can game at 8K, but it is not a perfect experience. All of the games we tested far exceeded my expectations in terms of graphic settings and also FPS. However, much simpler games like Jedi Fallen Order really struggle to even hit 30 FPS and they're linear with really small levels and not too much going on. If you're going to spend this amount of money on a gaming setup, I think it would be much better to play at 4K 120 FPS. And you can easily achieve that with a $400 gaming console like the Xbox Series X, which brings up the question, are gaming PCs becoming obsolete? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. But if you want to see the best 4K 120 display for your next generation console or gaming PC, you should check out this video next where I purchased the world's smallest OLED TV that you can buy.